Hello, everyone. Welcome to Avaya's Healthy Aging Curriculum. I'm Andy Anderson. My partner, Ike Allen, and I are teachers, mentors, and the co-owners of Avaya University. Avaya is the creator of over a thousand books, films, courses, teachings, and other supportive resources. Thank you so much for joining us. Our fellow teacher, Lloyd Burrell, is here today to talk with you about how EMFs make you age faster and what you can do about. Lloyd is the author of two eBooks on EMFs, a regular speaker at online events, podcasts, radio shows. He also hosts his own bi monthly EMF health podcast. He has a new book on Amazon and many, many other things. So thanks so much for being here with us, Lloyd. Thanks so much for the invitation, Andy. Yeah, absolutely. So let's, let's talk about this topic. I'd love to get a little background on your story. So why did you start raising awareness about EMFs? Like, how did you get into this work? Yeah, so how I got onto this work was one day I had a telephone conversation which changed the course of my life. And you've probably heard somebody say something similar uh, to you before. But the difference here was it wasn't some devastating news. Uh, the dog had got run over or um, my father had died or whatever. Yeah. It was the energy of this um, device I was using, the cell phone, which suddenly one day to the next began to impact me. And I, rem I remember very clearly when this happened. It was February 2002, so it's kind of the anniversary today because we're <laughs> recording this in February 2020. And I was just thinking about that before we came on. So it's eight, actually 18 years ago. And yet I can remember very, very clearly what happened. And I was working outside and I took the cell phone out of my pocket, put it to my ear, and I began to feel... Um, a kind of a bizarre sensation initially and that bizarre sensation very quickly turned into an unpleasant sensation and then it went in the space of a few uh, cell phone calls people calling me because I was running a rental business at the time so nothing to do with this EMF thing mm -hmm. at all um, it went to just literally unbearable and I was uh, had this just unbearable pain up the side of my face, um, really just, you know, it just happened, just came on just like that for no apparent reason. Um, and all of the, my face was burning up, um, very hot, what, what, what I call hot head now, um, hot head, prickly skin, and uh, this rather disorienting uh, feeling. And those were the immediate symptoms. And then that uh, developed over time because it actually, it got so bad, and I've told this story many times, it actually got so bad, I went to see my doctor. So I'm not somebody who goes to the doctor a lot, hardly ever had a day off work. And um, I went to see my doctor, and he um, did various rather simple tests. He couldn't find anything wrong with me, he told me to take a break, to take it easy. He said, he said it's stress. And I was like, it is, this is not stress. <laughs> I know what stress is. I've had stressful jobs before. But I took his advice. I took a week off work, went away with the kids, came back. It was fine while I was away, came back. Monday morning, boom, there it was again. And it was just a slippery, slidey slope from that point on. And I started reacting to everything. Um, the TV, the radio in the car, um, obviously Wi-Fi going out um, in different places. Uh, although Wi-Fi wasn't what it is now. This is right. 2002. And um, obviously cordless phones, but even my corded landline phone. Um, and it was just, my life became a living hell uh, because it seemed I was unwell being in my own home and I was unwell when I went out. Uh, I really, it seemed as though there was nowhere to escape, nowhere to hide. Um, and the symptoms evolved over time and it just got worse and worse. And I was kind of telling myself, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. But I wasn't okay. It was just getting worse and worse and worse. I was going to see the doctors. They got no, um, no idea, to be quite honest. Uh, I went to lots of different specialists. I went for different scans and things. And basically, they couldn't find anything wrong with me apart from I just had a little bit of blood pressure. Um, and yet, I was on all this pain, joint pains, digestive pains. Um, I could sleep and sleep and sleep and get up in the morning, and I was like a zombie. Um, so something was very wrong, and this went on for over two years, 
where I was just kind of kidding myself, saying, saying it was okay. And then one day I read in my newspaper, because I used to get a newspaper at that time. They won't send it to me anymore in France, very sadly. <laughs> but I used to get my British newspaper, which is the Daily Telegraph. And there I read a story about a gentleman who have actually subsequently met and, 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 and spoke to and interviewed in my podcast, who was a CEO of a big food group in the UK. And this guy couldn't use his cell phone, used to drive around in a clapped out old car, um, couldn't use a computer, used to dictate everything to his secretary and used to um, go to sleep at night in a room with no electricity. And they gave a name to this and this was electrical hypersensitivity or electrical sensitivity. And that was it. That was, boy, I'm not going crazy because I literally thought I was going crazy. And it was from that point on that I decided to do something, get your act together, Lloyd. And uh, it took me about 10 years actually to get my act together. Um, and the result is what I'm doing now. And that's why I'm speaking about it. Mm, awesome. Thank you for, for sharing that. And it's, yeah, it's interesting to, to look back at 2002 and, and how things have changed too. And I'd love to like, I'd love to like talk a little bit about that, that in a minute in the world of right, like how Wi-Fi has changed and right, like, you know, all this technology has gotten, um, I guess, more advanced in so many ways, but uh, probably affects our health in different ways. So, so let's just talk about, I guess, EMFs in general, like for people who are watching right now, listening right now, who aren't familiar with this topic, could you just give a little background on what, what they are and how they affect yeah, us? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the question is, the million dollar question is, what the heck are EMFs? Yeah. What does EMF actually mean, even mean? And what EMF means for me, and this is because this whole topic is full of jargon and acronyms, um, and what EMF means for me and most people, stroke experts, is electromagnetic fields. Um, and um, sometimes it's called electromagnetic radiation. Sometimes we use the word EMF to mean e uh, electromagnetic frequencies. But when I say EMF, what I mean is electromagnetic field. And the, the issue is this. Okay, so I talked about cell phones. So if you're just like never heard of EMS before, you're probably kind of suspecting that maybe cell phones aren't all that they're made out to be in terms of, and, and, and there may be some ill effects from cell phones. Maybe you've got the idea, maybe you've, this has just never crossed your mind. But um, so the, what it is, is there is a myriad of devices now and technologies, which we just take for granted, which are wonderfully convenient and have transformed our lives. And certainly I'm talking wireless technology, particularly in the last five to 10 years, and these technologies, there is a downside. And this downside, very few people are aware of. And so the kind of thing I'm talking about, I'm talking about cell phone, I'm talking about Bluetooth, cordless phones, um, anything that says smart on it at all, anything, remember this, smart is not smart because smart is just another word for radio frequency, microwave radiation. You notice how I said the word microwave. What do you think when I say that? You think microwave oven. That's what most mm -hmm. people think. Well, yeah, you're bang on because microwave ovens and these devices are using broadly the same frequency. So microwave ovens, about 2.4 gigahertz. That means 2.4 billion cycles a second. I know it's mind boggling. How can you even think that something can go that fast? But those are the kind of uh, frequencies we're talking about and everything in this subject it's all about frequency or frequency is key there's frequency and wavelength and these two things are uh, inversely uh, proportional um, and so all these devices are working at different frequencies um, and there is really two big categories of EMF so there is, there is a wireless which I've just been talking about, the cell phones and every and smart and Bluetooth and all that, and really everything you've got in your home. And I, I mean literally everything, right down to your washing machine, your dishwasher, your oven, everything you can think of now is being fitted with smart very often. Okay, not always, but very often. So you've got the wireless, that's one category. And then the other category is the wired and the wired is, well, you're thinking, well, yeah, but hang on, the wired, that's okay, it's safe, it's in wires. Right. But no, uh, unfortunately, it's not safe uh, because wired um, exposures are present in our homes. Also, because what goes through those wires, because most of 
our home electrical uh, wiring. So you're in the US, I'm in France, in Europe here, but we're using the same, what we call Romex plastic coated uh, wires. And this does virtually nothing to insulate these electromagnetic fields. And as soon as this uh, current is flowing through the wire, in fact, even when the current is not flowing, we have EMS. Uh, so when the current is even not flowing, so you have a light on, for instance, uh, you'll have a light, I beg your pardon, the light is not even switched on, you have an electric field in the wire, in that light. Um, and as soon as you put the wire, the wire, uh, the light on, you have a magnetic field. Um, and so, yeah, so we've got these two categories, wireless and wired. Um, and that, that very simply, without getting too technical, is what the issue is um, in terms of the exposures. And, and the, the kind of the why, uh, which, I, um, which to answer your question, which is perhaps formulated in your mind is, you know, okay, so that's great, Lloyd, but, but why was, what, what is the big deal? Right. Well, the big deal is that thousands of independent studies are showing that EMF exposures from these communal garden everyday devices, which have just taken over our lives, have adverse biological effects. And that, to put it very simply, what we're saying is that these devices, which we're all using and not giving a second thought to, are actually impacting our health in many cases in a very significant way in a very very significant way and that is the the crux of the matter so um you mentioned some independent studies could you like share a couple of examples of what they're what they're finding in in like what the effects are yeah so independent studies um so i have a lot of research um on my website electricsense.com um there's a lot of rubbish on the internet, okay, let's be honest. Um, more and more, uh, the internet, uh, we have to be very careful, uh, particularly with Google searches now uh, in the natural health space, um, there is a certain censorship going on. Um, so there is, it's, it's more and more difficult to get the information. Um, but there is, uh, there are studies going back actually uh, decades, actually going back hundreds of years um, 1891, uh, Darsonville and uh, Nikola Tesla did a study uh, which found uh, adverse effects from uh, EMF exposures, a very simple study, uh, effects on perspiration, respiration and uh, body weight. That was one of the first studies. And really, since then, there have been so many studies, a great resource I can recommend, uh, recommend is the Arthur Furstenberg book, Arthur Furstenberg, uh, The Electronic Rainbow for the whole history of this thing. Um, and then, um, for instance, 1971, we have nearly 50 years ago, we have the Naval Research Institute, which published over 2,300 studies. That's 1971. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the Buy Initiative Report, which is a very authoritative report of peer-reviewed studies, which review, was published first in 2007, which reviewed 30 years of studies uh, up until then, approximately 2,000 studies. It was written by some very um, brilliant minds, scientists, researchers, public policy uh, officials. And the conclusion of that was that the existing safety guidelines do not protect us at all. So basically, we're, we're not protected um, really by anything um, in terms of these exposures. Uh, there are some guidelines, but they're just so, um, they're, 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 it's like putting, um, you know, uh, a speed limit of uh, 300 miles an hour uh, on, mm -hmm. the, on the freeway, if you want, right. if that gives you some kind of note. It wouldn't even be 300, it'd be like 3,000 miles an hour because these, you know, because as soon as we get into EMS, we're talking billions, millions. And so it's, it's rather difficult for, um, to get our minds around these uh, these kind of numbers but yes yeah, so there is a lot of research uh so by initiative report 2007 as i said 2012 published again with another and they reviewed the uh 1800 studies in the intervening period so no they published 2007 again in 2012 and just in that intervening period we got another 1800 studies so what i'm saying is there are thousands of studies if you go to emfportal.com there's you can probably see about 30, if you're just looking for just the bare, boring, 
studies which nobody really reads. There's going to be about 30,000 studies on there at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, it, and, and what, so what are these studies saying? Um, they're saying lots of things, but we're talking about adverse biological effects. And so we have the adverse biological effects. And this is really what it's really is what's going on at the cellular level, um, and notably with the uh, cell membrane. And one of the things which has come out uh, in the literature recently, some brilliant work done by Dr. Martin Paul, P-A-L-L, um, who has done some brilliant work on the calcium gated voltage channels. So it's this um, ion exchange uh, in our cells. And the very simply what he found was that um, these um, radio frequency radiation exposures are causing a calcium leakage into the cells. And you know what this causes? Mm -hmm. premature aging very simply okay. <laughs> so yes. this is right bang on uh you know what um what your people are interested in what we're talking about here today um so it's it's what's going on at the cell uh, the cell membrane and it's just this whole uh, cascade of um chemical effects so we've got the because we're actually more bioelectrical bioelect beings than we are biochemical beings so we, we tend to think in terms of biochemistry because that's what doctors talk about but we're actually uh, more bioelectrical bio than biochemical. And the two are obviously linked, um, but it's really what's going in our bodies. We've got this communication which is going on. And how's it going on? It's going on through electrical signaling. And that's how our cells are communicating with this electrical signaling. And these EMFs interrupt uh, this, um, pervert this uh, electrical signaling and um, the, the, the effects are many, many. Um, so the, on, the, on the cell membranes, um, on uh, DNA, uh, DNA single double uh, strand bra bra breaks. DNA, obviously, the blueprint um, of, of, in our cells. If, if, we, if we mess up the blueprint, blueprint, where does that leave us? Yeah, you don't have to be Einstein to figure that out. If you're messing up, if you're building a house, you mess up the plans, you imagine what the house is going to look like at the end of the day. The walls are going to be all over the place. So this is really bad news. So effects on the DNA, effects on uh, enzymes. We're really just a collection of enzymes, of proteins. Uh, effects on the mitochondria, these little uh, plants, the power plants uh, in our cells. And just a cascade of uh, effects, really. Um, uh, free, uh, creation of free radicals, which is leading to um, oxid oxidative stress and I don't need to tell you, uh, Andy, the oxidative stress is like at the root of most diseases. So we have really um, just a myriad of um, subtle, low-level effects. It's not, boom, the sledgehammer. It's low-level micro, it's a low-level micro stressor over time, which eats away, eats away, eats away. And what happened to me in that day, that day in 2002 is, boom, the balance was tipped and I was tipped into a state of dis-ease and this is what happened. It happened to me, it happened to you and that's why it can happen to you. Mm -hmm. I hope it doesn't. <laughs> but this is why I'm talking about it because it is, there is so much ignorance about this and it is very, very clearly when you look at the research, it is just mind-blowing. Mm -hmm. So I guess the million-dollar question is, like, what do we do about it? Like, how can, how can people protect themselves from this low-level stress? That is a great question. And um, that is what I've been doing um, online pretty much uh, since 2009, is talking about uh, solutions. Um, when I first... Um, became electrically, magnetically sensitive or electrically hypersensitive. It's um, there, were, there were no solutions. And this is a really peculiar thing is that there's two categories of people listening here. There are those people like you, let's say, who are not electrically hypersensitive, and that's great. And most of those people are thinking, well, this is not a big deal because I'm not affected by this. Right. But EMFs affect everybody. And so there's a lot of people who are thinking, well, this is, doesn't concern me, doesn't impact me, therefore it's not important. That is wrong. That is not what the science is saying. The science is saying it impacts everybody. And then we've got this other category of people like me, which are electrically hypersensitive. I don't have the debilitating symptoms anymore because I did all the stuff to deal with this. Um, 
which uh, I'm going to just outline what we can do. Um, but um, though, once you get to that uh, state of being hypersensitive, it's very difficult to get back to living a normal life. It really is difficult uh, because it, you, you just start reacting to everything. And um, that's what you need to avoid. And that's why you need to take action. And the action, so I have a, a three-step plan, um, a philosophy, if you like, um, for dealing with this. And the philosophy is um. And I really like the um because it sounds kind of uh, rather Zen and rather Buddhist. Uh, it sounds like a mantra, but it's not. It's actually just an acronym for UMM. And the U is for to understand. And that's what we're doing today is understanding Firstly, that maybe, you know, this is dangerous and we need to do something about it. Um, and then over time, you won't get all this today, but understanding really some of the more uh, technical uh, aspects of this, uh, that there are these different categories, the radio frequency radiation, the magnetic fields, the electric fields, and the dirty electricity, which is another form of exposure, which is on your wiring, and getting your head around this rather complex topic and that does take time so that's the first step is to understand because if you don't understand you can't effectively deal with it right you'll be dealing with it in a kind of itty bitty um just yeah it, it won't lead to anything concrete concrete mm -hmm. uh, uh, without having this this uh, framework uh, to, 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 to deal with all the different uh, exposures. So the first one is understand. Second one is to measure. At some point, you're going to need to measure. Um, and this you can do very simply uh, with a device called an EMF meter. And there are different kinds of EMF meters. And the meters that I recommend for people, for most people, that's to say that are not uh, electrically hypersensitive and they're just looking for a simple meter. It might be the Trifield TF2, for instance, or the Cornet ED88T um, Plus. <laughs> we keep adding on another word to, to, to uh, as it's evolving. Um, but a Cornet meter called the ED88T Plus, is, is, as it's now called. So these are tri-mode meters. They measure three kinds of uh, EMFs. So that's the second step, is to measure. At some point, you're going to need to measure. So it might not be today. It might, you know, it might be six months down the line, a year down the line, but at some point you will need to measure because these things are all over your home. Until you get the meter, you won't begin to understand. I'm going to show you uh, a meter. Um, well, I've just got this one. It's the first one I've pulled out of the bag, uh, which is an acoustic meter, which is actually my favorite meter. And you can see that it's actually... Picking up, it's interesting. It's picking up something. I must have something switched on here. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so that is um, Wi Fi, which you can hear, the da -da 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 -da, uh, which uh, is at um, 10 hertz a, a second. So that's, and all these frequencies have got a very distinctive sound. Um, and it, it's really just so easy to measure. It, 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 it's stupid not to. Um, so that's the second point. So, me so first point, understand. Second point, measure. And the third point is to mitigate. And there's three ways uh, to mitigate. First thing you can do is you can just turn the thing off. So it depends what we're talking about. But whatever EMF device we're talking about, be it a cell phone, be it the, your, your Wi-Fi router, be it your electrical light, which is creating this electric and magnetic field, as I explained to you, you can just turn the thing off. Obviously, there's inconveniences <laughs> if you turn it off, but yeah. you can turn it off. We have this choice. We have the power to press the button and turn it off. We do. Pe few people do it, but we do have the power to do that. So you can turn it off. That's the first thing you can do. Second thing you can do is to uh, increase the distance. So increase the distance between you and the device. Whenever you do that, it's like win-win big time. Uh, because most of these exposures fall off exponentially. So you just gain a little bit, just a few millimeters of uh, holding your phone away, a few millimeters further from your ear. And by the way, I don't recommend you use a cell phone next to your ear at all, but I'll go into some cell phone tips if you like after this. Mm -hmm. But um, then that can uh, decrease your exposure by something like 10,000 times. Yeah, very, very, very significant. So um, it seems like just, um, you know, it's so simple. Why not do it? Um, 
And so, uh, so turn off, increase distance. And the third thing we can do to deal with these exposures is to shield. And uh, shield is the last thing. Uh, and the reason it's the last thing is because shielding is always a last resort. And what happens is with this whole EMF question is, um, it's like most people, um, unless they're incredibly or not incredibly, but certainly more and more people are interested in this. But when somebody suddenly, when the EMF juggernaut hits them, like it did hit me in that day, on that day in 2002, then the first thing they think is, oh my God, oh my God, I've got a shield. I've got a shield in the house. I've got a shield in the bedroom. I've got a shield myself. Um, no, because shielding is always a last resort. Shielding is not natural. And my solution is really, it's all about, um, it's about embracing um, the forces of nature and, and, and nothing can outdo that. Nothing, we can't outfigure nature. So the closer we get to nature in every respect, uh, the better. Uh, and so if we do shield, then we go softly, softly with the shielding. And there is a protocol to do that, which I speak about um, in my book. Mm -hmm plug the emf yep. practical guide which is just out so uh, 250 260 pages uh, just out on amazon over 500 references um and it's about the simple science i even put it in there uh because i want the, there is so there's two um things which are important in this book or two objectives which i have first one is to talk about the science because there is so much science because people think there isn't any science mm -hmm. because we've gone into that and we can't find the science hardly now. It's really hard to find, but there is, there is, there are thousands and thousands of studies, independent studies. And the second thing is the solutions. And there are so many solutions. Um, and I've set out the solutions um, in, in three categories. Uh, first, uh, free and easy, second, intermediate, and third, advanced. So depending what level you're at, uh, then there is, uh, you can choose your level, you know, as to how far you want to take this. Got it. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. And so like, I guess I'd love to talk about cell phone tips. And then I also want to talk about 5G because that's a topic of interest these days that people keep talking about. So I actually, wherever you'd want to start, but like, what are some tips for people and more healthfully using a cell phone? And then what about 5G? Okay. So uh, cell phone tips. Um, so self, it's, it's really important to talk about this. Why? Because there are now more cell phones in the world than there are people. Oh. These things are everywhere. <laughs> and you know, I live in a little cocoon here. So because I work way too hard, <laughs> uh, just read my book. And um, uh, I have to kind of like just, you know, batten down the hatches when I'm to, to get things done, as I'm sure you do too. Um, and then I just been away and we went to Sri Lanka and we visited mm -hmm. certain things and I went on an airplane and stuff like that with it Wi-Fi by the way um, and um, the thing is I need Wi-Fi to work so right. when I go away I'm rather happy that there is Wi-Fi but I don't mm -hmm. really want to sleep with it and I don't want to be too close with it but I want it to be good when I do want to use it mm -hmm. and then when I'm not using it I don't want it to be on obviously that's more difficult when you go away to hotels and different places um, but one of the things that, yeah, I notice is when I go out in the world is, and I do travel, I love traveling, is, is that more and more that just people have got their eyes glued to these things. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, I mean, it really is just, it, it's, it's, it's funny, it's weird, it's sad. Um, and what's particularly sad is um, when I see children uh, using these devices, and that's why I started talking about this because when I became sick and I saw, I'm a father, and I saw young children using phones, that just broke my heart. When I, when I learned about the science, when I initially thought, you know, became uh, sensitive, when I discovered I got this sensitivity, I thought I was just going crazy and it was just me and it was nobody else. And then I realized that these EMS were affecting everybody, but I realized they were particularly affecting children. So that's just one I uh, just want to slip that in there, uh, that children, and this is a science again, I'm talking about science because where, how it started with me is I, you know, the reason I'm talking about it is be this is because I felt this thing. I felt it. It really did change my life. It, it, it wasn't just something that just happened and I, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's another, you know, just something else, but it really, um, it, it completely changed the course of my life. And then I went and learned about the science 
it was only once I was, uh, you know, I'd been affected that I learned about the science. And now I talk about the science, but first and foremost, you know, I feel this stuff and I still do today. Um, but um, so we need to um, focus on the cell phones because everybody's got these cell phones, including our children. The, the, the number one recommendation for everybody, and you're not going to like this, folks, is to not use your cell phone. Uh, don't put your cell phone next to your head. The number one recommendation is actually to use your cell phone as little as possible, to use your cell phone only in emergencies. And I'm not trying to be popular. Obviously, I'm not going to be popular saying this. Um, <laughs> but I'm saying this because I've experienced the effects firsthand. And secondly, I know the science. I've read the science. I don't know all the science, but um, I've got my ear to the ground <laughs> with this and I'm following it very closely. And so the question is, okay, Lloyd, that's great, but I need my cell phone to do my job. You know, you're all, <laughs> it's all fine, well and good for you, uh, but I need a cell phone, you know, to do what I need to do. I'm a salesman, uh, whatever job you do today, um, and even if you don't need it for a job, we get, we're moving into a world where there's so many things we're not going to be able to do. For instance, uh, you know, banking is practically all online now. There's just so many things we can't do, buy stuff, unless we've got a phone. So what do we do? Well, we use the phone intelligently. And we go back to that thing I said before, and this is super important, this little phrase I keep trotting out, distance is your friend. Distance is your friend. And whatever uh, exposure we're talking about, we're always trying to increase the distance between you and the device. And the same goes with the cell phone. And so you remember I said just a few millimeters away uh, can reduce exposure by something like 10,000 times. Well, imagine if you're not putting that thing right next to your ear when you're speaking on it, but actually holding it uh, a decent distance away uh, in, your, in the palm of your hand. Um, that makes it safer. The thing is, none of this is safe. Nobody can say it's safe. If somebody, can, is, if somebody says to you, using a cell phone like this, you know, in such a such a way is safe, don't believe them. It is not true. This is how, this is how pervasive the, these technologies are because, because, because it impacts our health at a cellular level, subtle cellular level, micro stressor, day by day, chip, 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 eating you away. Um, and so we need to gain uh, distance between you and the device, different ways we can do this. We can use a speaker mode that's uh, free. Only thing is, it kind of broadcasts to the whole world your conversation, everybody mm -hmm. that's around you. Um, and how annoying is that? I mean, personally, I find it really annoying when people start talking loudly on a cell phone. In my, if I'm in the same room, even if I can't hear the other conversation. But if you've got, yeah, if you've got the other conversation as well, uh, well, maybe it's better. Maybe you can understand what's being said. I don't know. But I, I, I'm really not interested in other people's conversation. I don't think most people are. So the way to get around that is to use. Um, an air tube headset. And um, why are we using an, an air tube headset? Well, the problem with the classic headset is that it's a wide connection and the wire can act like an antenna and actually pick up the ambient radiation and shoot it straight up into your brain. So what I'm saying is using a wire, a wide headset can actually be worse than using mm. an air tube headset. Um, and there's lots of different air tube headsets on the market and I reviewed these on my website. There is usually a downside in terms of the quality of the music. So if you're wanting to listen to Schubert or Beethoven, uh, classical music or you know, um, uh, your favorite rap artist or whatever, then maybe you're not going to get that boom, boom, boom. Um, but there is actually, and this is like two days old, something. I know there's a company called SYB, which actually now got a device which you can, which, which uh, converts any wired headset into a YouTube headset, uh, an AirTube headset, I beg your pardon, not YouTube, <laughs> an AirTube headset. So it's a little device that you, 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 you put on the phone. Uh, it's about this long. Um, I'm not exactly sure how it works, but it's got an AirTube component in it. I'm guessing I've not had time to review this, uh, but yeah, so it's called SYB, uh, and that's a workaround for that. Uh, but certainly, um, think text, don't talk. Text, don't talk. And that's not to say texting is safe and that you can text willy-nilly to your heart's content all day long. No, uh, because texting has its dangers too. And um, 
just uh, anecdotal evidence, people writing in, because I have thousands of people writing in, because as soon as you start talking about this and people are just telling you their stories, and I've had so many stories about this, you know, people who are getting um, um, different symptoms from texting, uh, pins and needles and things in their hands. So texting is not good either. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, those are some very simple things you can do with a cell phone. All the, the other thing um, is to use airplane mode. Uh, yeah. As much as possible, put your cell phone on airplane mode. And when you do this, you need to make sure that you put the cellular um, connection on airplane mode. That's to say the connection with the cell towers that you put the Bluetooth on um, and that you put the Wi-Fi on. Um, and the GPS also, if possible, that you can uh, knock that out. That's not always possible. And they don't make it easy to do this. So mm -hmm. you have to go in the setting. I mean, there should be just a button where you can press that and it goes off straight away, but there's not, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, use airplane mode as much as possible. And that very, very quickly, very quick overview is my top tips for making your cell phone safer. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. So what about like 5G? This is a, uh, it seems to be something talked about often these days, the concerns around that. So what, first of all, what is that? And, and how might that affect our aging? How might that affect our health? So 5G, um, what 5G is not is um, when you see 5G on your Wi-Fi router, uh, that is not 5G. Uh, that is just another frequency. Um, so we have most routers are on um, 2.4 gigahertz and we have another frequency in the 5 gigahertz range. So that is not 5G. Uh, what 5G is, is the fifth generation. It's the next generation of uh, cellular technology, um, which is going to take us into this rather amazing world where... Um, people and devices are going to be connected like never before. So what's coming in with 5G goes hand in hand with IoT, Internet of Technology, uh, Internet of Things. Um, and it's, it's about connecting more and more. It's about connecting objects. So it's not just people, it's connecting objects. And it's about speed. Very simply, it's about speed. And the why, if you want behind the 5G, is um, that... Um, we're, the, we're moving, um, we're running out of space. We're running out of, uh, frequency bands, uh, around the world. Uh, and it might sound difficult to believe, but, um, the existing frequencies fr uh, have pretty much been used up and the existing frequency bands are sub three gigahertz okay one to two gigahertz it's different in different parts of the world but one to two gigahertz um and these frequency bands are becoming saturated so we're moving into higher frequencies what's called mmw millimeter wave why is it called millimeter wave because it's the length is very short millimeter wavelengths the length of the wave very short wavelengths um, so we're talking um, and remember this inverse uh, relationship, which I mentioned before. So it means if we've got a very short uh, millimeter uh, wavelength, means we have a very high frequency. And so we're moving into higher frequencies. And again, why are we moving into high frequencies? Because all the lower frequencies, it's all sold. It's all taken. It's all used. Um, so the cell phone company, obviously, um, are wanting to develop their business. <laughs> and um, they're telling the consumer that this is better because we're going to have faster download speeds. And I'm not contesting that. Nobody's contesting that. But uh, it's, we're told it's going to be 10 to 100 times faster than existing um, technologies, the 4G and the, 4, the, the 4G LTE. The 4G LTE is also pretty fast also. Um, but um, there is a huge downside to this. And uh, so this... The 5G is, has actually been around for decades, uh, but we're move, moving into uncharted waters because we have never, it's never been tested, this uh, 5G, on uh, this scale. 
And they're actually, they've actually been using uh, 5G. The military have been using it for crowd control. Um, and so 5G has been used to inflict harm. And we're now using frequencies which are capable of inflicting harm to just communicate data, you know, to just be able to uh, go on YouTube, to just be able to, um, you know, uh, exchange messages and do everything we're already doing, uh, but do it way faster. And it is, it is about, it is about data and it is about speed, speed of data, speed of data transition. That's what they're telling us. Mm -hmm. But the real thing is it's about money. Uh, it's about money and it's about developing uh, this new technology and a new demand for this new technology, which is not at all clear that there is a real demand for this. But um, we have studies which are pointing to a number of adverse effects uh, with these 5G uh, frequencies, notably effects on the skin, um, on the uh, how it uh, affects the sweat ducts uh, in the skin, which can act like an antenna. So that's to say all your skin is acting like an antenna. Um, effects on the eyes, several studies on that. Um, effects on the immune system and um, effects on um, also um, a lot of effects on plants and animals, insects, uh, wildlife, uh, particularly insects, uh, because it's their and their um, wings are acting like antennas. Certain insects, like bees and um, uh, small insects, and they just have an they have uh, body parts which are acting like an antenna because we're all actually acting like antennas in different respects. Uh, but this is. Um, this is a big concern, and there are studies behind this. We don't have all the answers with 5G, but here's the thing with 5G. Here's why it's a particular concern. It's because we've already got the 2G, the 3G, the 4G, and the 5G is on top of the existing exposures. So it's adding in another layer of electro smog. And um, we just don't know what this is going to do but from where you know the reports that that are coming uh, out now are concerning and there are people there are places where for instance in geneva where 5g has been switched on and literally from one day to the next a whole load of people uh, are just uh, falling ill have got headaches and all kinds mm -hmm. of symptoms um and it's you know, this is happening the same also in the US uh, because it's already been introduced in cities like Los Angeles, parts of cities like Los Angeles um, and, and uh, Texas, uh, Dallas uh, in Texas um, and in different places around the globe. So it is becoming a reality. Mm -hmm. Is it going to um, go so far as they're wanting it to go? As to say they're uh, launching satellites into space. I don't know if you're aware of this, Andy, but um, something like 50,000 satellites into space so that we can have 5G uh, in rural areas too. So they're beaming down the 5G. Um, so it's going to be all over the planet. That's what they want to do. We'll see where this right. leads us. <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> right. We'll talk about that next year or the year after. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's a, a good overview of that and, and what's potentially to come. And, and yeah, we will, we will see what's next as far as 5G goes. So um, I want to make sure you get a chance to talk about a couple things, Lloyd. There's a couple buttons below this video, everyone who's watching or listening, that lead over to a gift that you have as well as an offer. And then also we have a link over to your new book. So could you, could you share about those things? Five simple steps to protect yourself from cell phone radiation. <laughs> um, so um, it's a great little report I wrote, um, which is outlining the science, some of the science, um, and uh, just some very simple things that you can do to protect yourself, protect your kids, protect your family uh, from this uh, cell phone radiation. Um, and my book, so my book, um, which is just out on Amazon, uh, which I'm very happy has got some great reviews, um, which, yeah, is um, um, just really um, the most complete resource I know of, he says most immodestly, <laughs> on this whole question of EMFs, um, which um, no matter what level, um, it's, um, it's my story, and it is the science 
and it's just crammed full of practical tips, things you can do. Um, and it's the kind of book where you can have a conversation, you can read it and you're having a conversation with somebody and they'll go, yeah, but there's, you know, there's no truth to this. And you say, well, yeah, you know, there's 500 references in this book actually. Um, and so, yeah, th there is, there is science here and, um, you know, people need to know about this and it's really just a question of, um, beginning to take action at some point. Um, so maybe you're not ready to go out and buy your EMF meter today. Uh, maybe you're not ready to um, go out and buy anything. But maybe there's some little things you can do like, uh, we're not particularly talked about Wi-Fi, but like just turning off your Wi-Fi at night. Mm -hmm. uh, because who needs Wi-Fi at night, yeah? So Wi-Fi, just think, remember what it is, radio frequency, microwave radiation, 2.4 billion cycles a second which is just creating havoc in your cells and which is um slowly 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 chipping a, chipping away chipping away chipping away um prematurely aging you mm -hmm. and so you know what's the point in being super careful about what you eat and what you drink and uh, working out and uh, being so careful about uh, you know what you do and looking after your body if you've got this thing uh, stuck on the side of your face all day long and even if you're walking around with it you know in your breast pocket don't do it not when it's switched on cell phone mode just be, so there's so many little things you can do to protect yourself from these exposures. Mm, got it. Awesome. Thank you. And again, everybody, all those buttons are, are below that you can check out that free gift in your book and programs and, and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm, I'm trying to absorb everything that I've learned here today and, and, and then some. So are there any last insights, anything else you'd want to leave people with before we hop off? Um, I guess I always say to, I always say, well, you know, don't believe me just go do your own research. Um, and um, I think often we need to hear things from different sources um, and we need to hear it many times before we, we take action. Um, so that's what I would encourage you to do. And again, I would encourage you to be very selective about where you get your information more and more today um, because there is um, censorship going, going on. Uh, it's not that I want to talk about that. It's just I have to tell people this because, because it's what's happening, and because um, we're you know we're we're living in this world where it's just it seems as though that those are the only choices we have. But actually, you know, our choices are uh, much greater than this. And you know, it's really all this is what it's really about is about empowerment. It's about empowering you to take control of your health, and that's what I encourage you to do. And, you know, I talk about a lot, a lot about EMFs and it's, you know, health is not just about EMFs. Okay. <laughs> I don't pretend that for one minute, but you know, there is something which is, uh, and it was, uh, Nikola Tesla, uh, the father of electricity who said this, if you want to understand the, the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And that's what I want to leave you uh, to ponder with today, to think about energy, frequency, and vibration, and to think about that in your life. And that's what I do in my life, is I think about this, and I work with energy a lot, and um, which is something I don't I've not talked about. That's going to be my next book. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, these EMFs, what is it? It's just energy. And so we're all energetic beings. We're subtle energy beings. And this is something which um, we need to all take on board and and, um, and begin, begin to ponder and begin to play with. Yeah, have some fun with it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for doing this, Lloyd. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome to talk with you and, and learn today. I appreciate you being here. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thanks for and everyone who's tuning in and watching or listening right now, thank you so much for showing up for yourself and, and being here willing to learn on this healthy aging journey. And we will see you again real soon. Take care, everybody.